Hi, I'm James Golding from Ely Hawk, and today I'm going to be cooking a barbecue dish, which is spatchcocked partridge, and I'm serving this with a super simple but very, very tasty uh, roasted sweet corn with lime, chili, and shallot salsa. So let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, so the first job is to spatchcock the partridge. Now there's two reasons for this. One is so that when you eat it, it looks all pretty and, it, and it's really easy to tear apart. But the other reason is so that it cooks nice and evenly on the barbecue when we get it on there. So top tip, a really good set of uh, scissors. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut in between the backbone of the partridge. So like that, straight through there, like so. I'm going to take that backbone out. Now, the other thing we need to do is just to break that um, wishbone there so that the whole thing opens out. And what you're looking for is a sort of, a bit like a sleeping frog is the, uh, is the words that our chefs use, which you'll see what I mean in a minute. So break that. We're going to cut just gently here. You hear that little crack? That was the bone breaking and then Literally, we're going to turn it over and with a bit of using the heel of your hand, just press down to get that breastbone open. And there we go. We have our spatchcocked partridge. Now, if you wanted to, we could put some skewers through and we could keep it all sort of open. But I think when this cooks, it's very unlikely to curl up. So we're going to leave it like this. I'm just going to season it up slightly with some salt and pepper. a little bit of rapeseed oil over the top. And what this will do is it'll help it cook. So when I put it onto the barbecue, you'll get those lovely bar marks on the meat when it's cooking. The corn for the salsa, I love when you have charred corn off the barbecue, when it gets that fantastic smoky sweet flavor. And the way to do that is to basically season up first and then put it on a really nice, well preheated barbecue. And you know, if you have a gas barbecue, that's absolutely fine. If you have a charcoal barbecue, it's even better because that's the smokiness that we want. You can, I think, on some gas barbecues, add a little bit of wood chip to it, which can also mimic that sort of flavor. So if you have one of those, I would advise using some wood chips just to get that smokiness onto the corn because it works really, really well. So that's that all seasoned up. We're going to head outside to the barbecue now and get cooking. Okay. So first job, let's get the corn on. And like I said before, we want a really nice overall char on that. And with the spatchcock partridge, what I like to do is I, I usually start with the skin down first, get a lovely color, and then I'm gonna flip it over and cook for about 80% of the rest of the way on the belly side, because you've got the bones there, you see, and the bones will protect the meats and keep it moist. So let's get that on there as well. Now, when you're cooking on a barbecue, it's very, very important that you let your coals die down. And that's, you know, that's, that's quite a, a, a tricky thing to do, is, is having the patience to let those flames subside. Because when you, when you light charcoal, what it does, it burns off all of those things that they put into it to sort of get it going. So if you're using a, a bought charcoal from, say, you know, a, a supermarket, really let those flames die off. If you've got a really good product, which I would... I'd advise you using, find a local local charcoal um, supplier, then, you know, it's, it's just a good way to get the maximum heat out of your charcoal. So, that's looking good. As you can see, it's starting to get those beautiful bar mark, uh, little sort of uh, bar mark uh, uh, caramelization points on it. And the, the, the trick is, is to move it 45 degrees. So if you want that perfect crisscross, then you literally move it on the diagonal, and that's when you get those perfect markings. It's quite important also when you're cooking to keep checking it. I think a, little, a lot of people forget how hot the barbecue can get, and there's nothing worse than burnt partridge skin. So, keep moving those around. Look at that, wow. There we go. And that's probably as much color as I'm gonna give it this side. So, like I said, we're gonna flip that over, we're gonna let that cook, and probably give it about another sort of six to eight minutes.
in here. I have some uh, brumoise of chili. Now, if you like super hot chilies, go for it and use the bird's eye chilies, use whatever you want. I've gone for a slightly milder chili with this just because I don't like it too fiery. I think that if it's too hot, you can't taste the um, partridge. Um, a little bit of lime zest into your shallots. You want about, probably about two thirds of the, the lime zest in there, that'll do. And then we also want the juice. So give a good old roll of your lime and what that does is that gets all the little pods of juice inside just separated and it makes it a lot easier to get that out of there. So check for any seeds, this is pretty clear. Get that lime juice in there now. Again, if you like lime, then you can put both halves in. For this, I'm actually gonna put lime and a little bit of lemon. I actually love lemon and lime together. I think it's a fantastic flavor combination and really sort of sets this salsa off. So watch out for any seeds. I just have one go in there now, I could hear it. And then into this, we're also gonna add some chopped flat leaf parsley. Now, it doesn't have to be super fine. As you can see, this is very rough. I kind of just want this for flavor. It doesn't need to be chopped to, you know, the point where you can't see the shape. I quite like the look. Now you could use coriander if you wanted to in this dish that worked really well. You want a nice amount of salt, some pepper, and then the corn. Now, as you can see, this has got fantastic charring on it and that's what we want. So when you cut the kernels off the corn, don't go too close to the, to the center of the, um, the cob because you will get some of that fibrous center in there if, you, if you're too kind of hard with your, with your stripping. So that's probably about right. Let's get this into the bowl. It's still warm actually, which is fantastic. I love the way that warm corn tastes, especially in the south, so it works really well. So we get a spoon, give it a mix around, and now we need the glue, which is olive oil. Now you could use rapeseed if you wanted to. Personally, I think olive oil works really well with this, and it's, it's just a bit more sort of palatable with the partridge. Okay, so now it's time to plate the dish. So it really is as simple as this, a lovely pile of the salsa right in the middle of the plate. Now, if you wanted to, you could serve this with things like Hasselback potatoes or even like mashed potatoes. Personally, I don't think it needs anything. You've got salad, you've got meat, you've got acidity, you've got sweets, you've got everything in this dish. So for me, my mouth is watering already because I can't wait to try it, but we have a perfect spatchcocked Partridge, as you can see, it's rested. You can see the juices have come out and this is perfectly ready to serve. So there we go. We have my spatchcocked partridge with a corn, chili, shallot, and flat leaf parsley salsa.